Welcome to the Biomaterials Lab. Safety is our first priority. So always ensure to wear proper personal protective equipment on you while you're working in the lab, which includes the lab coat, safety glasses and gloves. For further safety information, please visit safety.rise.edu. Power on the printer by toggling the power switch on side of the printer. Power on the air compressor below the bioassembly board by pulling the red knob outwards. This is the emergency stop button for the bioassembly board. Use this button to stop the robotic arm from moving or dispensing the biomaterial ink. To release the emergency stop, twist the knob. And we are ready to resume our operations. Here is an example of use case scenario. Here we want to retrieve a tool and while it is picking up and moving, if we think it is going to crash into something, we can stop the arm movement by pressing the emergency stop. The robotic arm is going to stop immediately. To resume the operation, twist the knob. And we can resume the operation. The bioassembly board printer has a robotic arm that can move in six axes. This is the touch interface to communicate with the printer. This PC has human machine software that we can use to communicate with the printer, to send print files, to do calibration and other functions. The air compressor can provide pressures up to 60 PSI. The robotic arm can pick one of these six print heads. We have ambient temperature print head, a UV print head, a dual extrusion print head. The dual extrusion print head can accommodate two different materials at the same time. Different pressures can be applied to individual materials for mixing at varying ratios. The hot print head can read temperatures up to 150 degrees Celsius. The 3D scanner print head can be used to scan a surface and use the scan surface as a print surface. The cool print head can reach temperatures down to 0 degrees Celsius. The print bed can be heated or cooled. It can be heated up to 60 degrees Celsius or cooled down to 10 degrees Celsius. The human machine interface, also known as HMI, has several menus and options to control the bioprinter. Today, I will be going over a few commonly used menus and options. On the status menu, we can see the status of the printer and its connectivity. The green light indicates the printer is online and is ready for printing. If this light is in orange or red color, there are connectivity issues and please contact the lab manager for troubleshooting. Under print menu, we can find various print jobs sent to the printer. Next is the control menu. Here we have multiple submenus for various operations. We can use the move menu to move the robotic arm for needle calibration. The scan menu to scan a surface and set it as a new printing surface. The heating cooling menu to control the temperatures of print head and print bed. Materials menu is available during the printing process to adjust printing speed or extrusion pressures. Other menu has several options to retrieve and remove print heads, to optimize extrusion pressures, etc. Next is the calibration menu. We use this for calibrating the needle tip under tip offset submenu. Today we will be using single syringe print head. This print head uses 30 cc syringe. With the help of an adapter, we can use 10 cc or 5 cc syringe. Unscrew the screw to load the syringe. Before installing the syringe into the adapter, we will prepare the syringe with our material. This is a 10 cc syringe and this is a piston. Insert the piston into the broader end of the syringe and using a blunt spatula, push the piston all the way to the end. 
we will be transferring the contents of the syringe into a 10cc syringe using a female to female lure lock adapter. Insert the adapter into the syringe and on the other end insert 10cc syringe. Now push the plunger until the ink is transferred into the 10cc syringe. Unscrew the female to female lure lock adapter and insert the air compressor line adapter on the other end of the syringe. And on the other end of the syringe, we will be inserting a needle. Today, we will be using a 22 gauge needle. Now take the adapter and unscrew these two screws. This is a two-piece adapter which can be separated as seen here. Insert the 10cc syringe by aligning the top and bottom of the syringe with the adapter. Insert the other half of the adapter and replace the screws and tighten them. Transfer this assembly into the print head. Make sure to align the screw with the notch on the adapter. Replace the big screw and tighten it. Insert the air compressor line adapter into the inlet here. Transfer this print head assembly into the bay. To optimize the extrusion pressure, click on control menu and click on other. Now click on retrieve tool. From the drop down menu, choose the print head that we want to work with. Today we will be using ambient tool in bay 1 and click on Retrieve tool. Now the print head is picked up and is positioned over the stage. Place a piece of chem wipe below the needle to collect extruded material. Click on On to enable the pressure. Right now, the pressure is set to 7 psi. Click on. And now a pressure of 7 psi is applied on the ink. See if the pressure extrudes the ink or not. As this is not sufficient, we can increase the pressure by clicking the plus sign here or clicking on the number and entering a value. Maybe we can try 15 psi. Click on on again to apply the new pressure. see if the material is being extruded. As we can see, the material is being extruded uniformly at 15 psi. Remember, the extrusion pressure changes from material to material and depends on the needle size. We can increase the pressure for printing at higher speeds. Let's try extrusion at 18 psi. As we can see, the extrusion is faster. So we can use this for faster printing. Now clean the tip and return the print head to its bay. Click on return tool and choose the bay one for ambient tool and click return. Today we will be printing on a glass slide. So place the glass slide or appropriate print surface on the stage. Now click on calibration menu 
click on tip offset here we are going to measure the tip offset by following these instructions go to control menu and click on other and retrieve the tool select the printhead we'll be working with and click retrieve tool Now click on move to move the robotic arm until the tip of the needle touches the print surface. Here are the controls to move along X and Y axis and here are the controls for Z axis. And here we can modify the step size. Remember, when we measure the tip offset, the printer remembers only the Z offset but not the X and Y offsets. So irrespective of the place where the calibration is done, the object is going to be printed depending on the object's position on the stage in TSIM software. During the robotic arm movement, all options are grayed out. So please be patient and click on the options once they are active. We can move the glass light to check for any resistance for proper calibration. Now go to calibration menu, click on measure tip offset. Now click close. We can save this tip offset measurement to use it later while printing again with similar print surface and similar needle and syringe types. Click on load to open previously saved measurements by selecting from the drop-down list. We can use the TSIM software to design 3D models, design new material printing parameters, and send print jobs to BioSLMBOT printer. To be able to send print jobs to the printer, the computer running TSIM software must be connected to the BioAssemblyBot using an Ethernet cable. Double click to launch the application. TSIM stands for Tissue Structure Information Modeling. Click on the right arrow here to expand options. First are the project settings. Choose the BioAssemblyBot printer model here and the other printing options as needed. The Biomaterials lab has BioAssemblyBot 400 model and we can leave the other options as default values. Here we have an option to control the stage temperature. We can enable if needed. The object material and object properties can be modified after creating or importing a 3D object. To navigate in 3D space, hold shift and left mouse button to rotate the view. Or left mouse click on the cube and rotate to change the view. We can get to the standard views by clicking respective faces on the cube for top, bottom, right, or left views. Using TSIM, we can design a model here or we can import 3D model from .stl files and other 3D data volumes such as DICOMs, Nifty, etc. Today, we will be designing a new model using TSIM. Click on create primitive to create one of the primitive shapes such as cuboid, pyramid, or cylinder. Today, we will be creating a simple cuboid. Click on the cube and draw a rectangle on the print bed. Change the values of width, depth, and height as needed. Remember, the printer is going to print the 3D object based on its position placed here on the print bed. Under Transform tab, we have options to manipulate the object, to scale, to move, or rotate. Use these handles on the model to manipulate the object, or we can change the values here as needed. After modifying the object as needed, we can assign a material for this object. 
Click on materials menu on the top and click on new material. On the bottom half of the page, we have various options for the new material. We give a name to the material and a short description. The color is for visual representation only in TSIM and HMI. This is useful to visualize different materials if you are working with dual or multi-material projects. Update the extrusion pressure for this material. In one of the previous steps, we have optimized extrusion pressure for this material, which was 18 psi. Secondary pressure is needed while working with dual extrusion printhead, and this will be the extrusion pressure for the second material. Start delay options will be needed for materials that take a moment to begin extruding. Change the acceleration as needed, preferably higher acceleration of 800 mm per second square. Change the speed as needed. Here we will be using 10 mm per second. Next is the mechanical dispenser type. We are not using any mechanical dispenser, so we will leave it as is. Next, the line width and the line height are going to be same as the needle diameter. As we are using 22 gauge needle, change it to 0.4 millimeters. We can decrease the height by a small amount to accommodate for the compression of layers during printing. We can change the layer action as needed. If you need to pause between layers for materials that have slow cross-linking speed. Next, change the print behavior to overprint or underprint depending on the extrudability of the material. Temperature control, change the parameters as needed. Change the UV curing parameters as needed. Today, we will not be needing UV cross-linking. Now, go back to solid modeling menu. Click on the materials. After selecting the object, scroll down to the materials and select the material we have created. To save the file, click on File menu and click Save to save the file as .tsim file. Create a new folder for the user and save it. Click on Bio Assembly menu and click on Send the Print Job. Here, we can see that the print job has been sent to the printer. Go to the print menu and select the print file we want to print and click start. Once the go option is available, click go. If we want to change the printing parameters during the printing process, go to control menu and click on materials. Now we can change the extrusion pressure, print speed and acceleration as needed. We can change the extrusion pressure to 15 and click OK. Now click on set materials to apply the new pressure. After the print job is completed, remove the print surface, which is the glass slide from the stage. Remove the print head from the bay and unscrew this screw here. To remove the air compressor line, press the black release ring and pull the line. Remove these two screws on the adapter.
Now remove the syringe and put the screws back on the adapter. Place the adapter back into the print head and fasten the screw. Put the print head back into the bay. Click on the bioassembly bot symbol here to exit the HMI application. Click OK. Click Start and power off the computer. Now power off the bioassembly bot by pressing the power switch on the side. Power off the air compressor by pushing the red knob. For further information or questions, please contact the biomaterials lab manager.